Um, I, no, I think the fact that we're here, I, I think it's a, it's a pretty cool feat. Um, you know, I think having something in the history books and what we've talked about with guys is, is something that no one, no, no one can take away. And it, it gives us something to shoot for uh, in years to come. But I think um, being in this moment, knowing how great the teams were uh, in the past and that we're right on the precipice of being able to overcome that, I think it speaks volumes to the kind of team we are and, and the kind of achievements we were able to attain this year. Does it give you a chance to bust Jason's chops? Um, oh, come no, on, Pablo. No, it, no, no, it doesn't. I, again, I, I, don't, I don't really look at it like that. I, I, I think, for me, again, I, I'm so boring. It's all about process. It, I wish I was that guy that looked at all these different things. But for me, it's about the work you do during the week. And, um, and it, but, but again, I think that validates the work that we do during the week over the course of you know, 10 months. You know what I'm saying? And so um, that will give us a great uh, talking point if we're able to achieve that going into preseason next year as the process is everything. And if you just keep your head down, when you look up at the end, you're going to be in a place that you're going to be excited about. I started and I, I mean, I'm in the media, so it's different, right? And I started looking at it when you were about at 40 points, you had so many games left. I thought, oh, this, this is absolutely doable. I'm curious when you started thinking about 59 and when you were willing to talk to the team about it. Um, we did it uh, really uh, before last game and said, like, just think about this is, you know, this, this performance tonight in San Jose could be historic and could put us in a position to be, um, you know, written in the history books at the club and that's that's an amazing feat so you know i think we had so many other issues going on and and that we wanted to make sure that we dealt with that uh i felt like the team was in a place to be able to receive something like that last game so you've often pointed out that the results don't always match the soccer and the games just got a little something mystical to it you're unbeaten in your last five. If you do get the result against Vancouver, you're unbeaten in six going into the playoffs. Does it, that sounds good to me, but does the soccer look that good to you to match that? No, it, I think it does. Uh, I, again, I think if you go back to the week where we conceded, I think 10 goals in a week, uh, that doesn't look, there's no such thing as good looking soccer when you're conceding 10 goals. Uh, and in the, uh, the last three games, we've conceded two goals. Um, but it's more in line with the type of how cagey the games are going to be at the end of the season. And so when I'm looking at it, I'm looking at like the comprehension defensively and the importance of moments defensively. Because uh, I think we'll always be able to create opportunities on goal. And it's on the day, it's whether we finish or not. But that defending thing is a really collective uh, buy-in. And what I see from uh, these last three games in particular is a team that's, that's improved in those areas in every game. And so, again, I think it's, it's so cliche to go after a game. We've got to look at the film and we've got to fix those areas. That's what we've been doing. And, and, and in doing that, you know, we put together a good performance against San Jose, um, found the goal, but, but really didn't give a whole lot up defensively. And if you can do that in the playoffs, you have a chance to win at home. You have a chance to win away from home. And that's the way I'm looking at it. It's not so much about these three games or whatever it is. It's about how we go into the playoffs with the right type of mindset and what aspect of the game is the most important. And for me, it's going to always be defending because I know that we have the firepower to score goals. Can you explain how there were back-to-back -back shutouts in April, then no, no more back-to-back -back shutouts, just a waterfall, a deluge of goals, and then back-to-back -back shutouts again all of a sudden. All I can think is, the guys had to really bottom out and get embarrassed, yep. and they had to go to rock bottom before they get back to what they're capable of. I, I think that's a great point, DJ. I, I think oftentimes in life, you know, we as coaches, we as parents, we try to teach our kids through advice. I've been here before. Uh, the problem is, is that they haven't, they haven't felt that themselves in, in recent times. I think when you bottom out and you go through 10 goals in a week in three games, two of those games, you're winning 2-0. Then they understand, they actually add meaning to the words that you've spoken in the past. And so, but it's not about the coaches, it's about the players understanding that. And then as a collective, really buying in on the training field to really work at those little moments. And, and the guys have done a great job of responding um, at an important time of the year uh, to, to make sure that we're, we're ready to go come playoff time. I know you got to coach all the guys all the time, not just the 11 are on the field. And I'm curious what you say now, because... Gavin Beavers had a chance. It stretch of games did not go well. 
now he's on the bench and he sees the team with shutouts and you can be a team guy but there's got to be a part of you that's dying what do you what do you say to a young goalkeeper in that moment well again i think my conversation with gavin um after that week was you know it's it's our job as as experienced ex-players and, and coaches to understand what a young player struggling through a tough time looks like right and the onus is on us to help that that's coaching that's mentorship um and so what he said it was i was there was a lot of learning going on that week, right? And so we're not at a part of the season where we can afford learning at the expense of getting results, right? So then that, that's, that was kind of the impetus behind the, the change. But one thing I'll, I'll say about Gavin is that he consistently uh, learned from his mistakes, gotten better. And unfortunately in this game, you have to make mistakes to gain experience like everything else in life. Um, and I think he's a player that has such a steely mindset and such a belief in himself that these, these will be unbelievable learning opportunities for them. And, and then the other part of that is, it's hard to learn when you're underwater. Because you're, you're now not, your brain isn't trying to receive information and apply it, you're, you're just trying to stay alive, right? And so there's no learning that takes place when you're, when you're treading, right? So removing them from that space allows him, this, gives him space from those events to be able to digest so that next time he's called upon, he's ready to go. How much has Vancouver changed? I know RSL's changed since the last time you played Vancouver. The roster's been turned upside down. How much has Vancouver changed? Since um, they've 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 added a couple new players. Um, obviously, we've we've got an, an ex Vancouver player in Javane Brown. Um, so uh, they, they've had quite a few changes. The way they play hasn't changed much. Um, you know, it's still Brian White and Gold leading the attacking. Um, and uh, you know, they're compact defensively, hard to get it. You know, hard to score on. Um, but again, it's, it's this time of the year where we've got to be ready for anything and, and everyone. And they can, they can change their systems, they can change all that. And we've just got to be, take all the lessons that we've learned from this year and apply it in real time in a game that, that means a lot for both teams. Have you sorted out the new attackers? You've got seven options for four spots. In your mind, do you kind of have these are the four that are best starting? These are the guys best off the bench? I, I think um, this this last game of the regular season allows us one more opportunity to kind of look at that. Um, and I, I like what I've seen in, in training the last couple of weeks. Um, I feel that, uh, you know, there's been, we've been able to solidify some partnerships in, in positions that maybe aren't customary for the individual players, but I think that helped the team out. Um, and so we'll have another look this, uh, this next game to see how we can continue to add little wrinkles to our attacking scheme um, to make sure that we have all our bases covered going into the playoffs. Was Crook sharp today in front of the goal or was that just me? It's, it's been an emphasis. Uh, the coaches have been really deliberate in um, talking to them after every training session, being more selfish in front of goal, being more um, being willing to, to miss chances at the expense of just keeping possession of the ball. And I think as a collective, that's a big point of emphasis that I've, been, that, 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 that I've, that I've made the last couple weeks is um, there's a lot of possession in and around the goal, but where's the killer instinct, right? And again, it's going to start with the nines and the tens, and Crooksy's one of those. And, and again, it's, it's great to see because it also, his tenacity against the ball has, in, has been more of a killer instinct as well. So it's like, it's really working both games, but today was brilliant. Uh, do you, when it comes to that lack of selfishness that actually you want and you crave, selfishness has a negative connotation. Right. But do you have to push Diego Luna harder or do you have to push Crooks harder to get in front of goal and score? Uh, I, I think both of them, really, equally. I, I think they're both uh, very much possession, possession oriented players, um, which is fine in the middle third. But we've got to change our mindsets when we get close to goal because the objective of the game is to score goals and to win games. And the only way you're going to do that is to take chances. And so instead of saying selfishness, the way I frame it is take more responsibility for the team. Be the guy that's willing to carry the burden of scoring the goal. I can't, and, and, and if these guys start doing that, then Chicho gets better looks, right? So it becomes a, a team thing. But instead of being selfish, take more responsibility in front of goal. My experience watching across a lot of different sports is when people are really focused and they're on the kind of role Chicho is on, you can ride that for a while. When they lose the focus and they cross some boundary somewhere, karma and the universe take over and bad things happen. And he's had a heck of a drought. Do you feel like he's done 
the hard work, the little work, and the details to get back in form, and the dam is about to break. I think so. I, and and really, we had a we had a scrimmage game um, on Saturday here, and we did a 60-minute exercise, uh, 11 v 11, and in those 60 minutes, we got 80% of the output we'd get in a 90-minute game. So think about that. That's that's pretty jarring, right? And so when when I see those type of numbers. Um, and then again, the defending starts at the top and seeing Chicho work as hard as he did. He also had three or four really great opportunities in front of goal. One he finished, but it was offside. So again, everything is uh, moving in the direction that we want. He's playing with more freedom. He's playing with more confidence. He's defending great for the team. He's putting himself in position to score goals. So it's now, you know, I'd hate to be on the receiving end of him scoring the first goal because, I mean, he's like a caged animal that just wants to break, break free. And, um, I think we're all anticipating him doing that sooner than later.